switch to my wireless mic. Good morning. Good to see you guys. Martin's glad you made it back safely. Did you hot rod it in the snowstorm? <laughs> Our theme this year uh, is to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for the building up of the body of Christ. Um, uh, I think it's probably no surprise that um, equipping each other is probably not a strong suit that we have. Uh, today we're going to kind of talk about why that might be. Um, there are obviously probably hundreds of reasons why we're not great at it, but uh, the Bible talks about productivity a lot. Uh, it talks about bearing fruit for the kingdom, uh, and I think that probably sounds wonderful to us, and we're like, yeah, I want to you know, bear fruit. Okay, what does that look like? Uh, how do I bear fruit? What kind of fruit do I bear? And the Bible talks a lot about um, being lazy and not working, and of course relates that to kingdom work as well. And uh, the, you know, God really doesn't have a lot of room for people who are um, lazy or unproductive. Uh, if people are able and capable of working, uh, they should be working, they should be producing. I read a book by, uh, by a Jewish rabbi, and I can't remember his name now, which is terrible, um, but it was, a, it was a book on business. And he said, you know, Jewish people will, will, will tell you that based on scripture, this idea of retirement is, it's kind of made up. Like there is no such thing as retiring. You don't work to a certain point and then just like, you know, chill out for the rest of your life. Like if you are able, um, you go out and you produce. Um, you produce fruit and you're productive and you help your neighbor until you die. And he talked about how uh, the jobs that we do are, are supposed to be designed to bless other people and to help other people. And so everything we do should be funneled into, um, into blessing people and making their lives better. Uh, so what makes us fruitless? Um, I have had some blackberry bushes that Tex gave me several years ago. I was, um, I was at his house and I saw these blackberries that were like, they were just massive. They were huge. I'd never seen anything like it. And just loaded with them. I mean, these blackberry bushes were just loaded down. And so I pointed them out. I was like, man, these are, these are really, I love blackberries. And these are like really tempting. So he got a, he got a um, shovel out. And he's like, well, here, let me dig you some up. Just take them home. And he's like, you can plant these anywhere. And they'll just, they'll be productive and they'll grow. So I did. I brought them home. I planted them several years ago. And, um, the first year, they were, they were somewhat productive. Um, the second year, not so much, and I thought, well, maybe I'm just not good at pruning. Um, so then the third year went by, and they started doing something the last, it was like the last three years. They would grow up in the spring, and they would look just gorgeous and beautiful, and they would blossom, and they would start growing lots of fruit, and then right before the fruit was going to ripen, they would just turn black. I mean, literally overnight, the whole plant would just turn black and die. And I was like, what in the world am I doing wrong? Um, so anyway, I, I did nothing <laughs> to help the plants along. I just assumed I, I, I was doing something wrong, didn't prune them right. Um, I never tested my soil, so I have no idea what's going on. Um, but this year, this last year, I finally just ripped them up. I know, I know, I'm an idiot, I know. <laughs> they were like, I just gave up on them. So I pulled them up, and of course the roots are still there, so they keep trying to come up. So that's going to be kind of a nuisance, um, unless I decide that I'm going to nurture them again and, and bring them back. So then I have raspberry bushes that are, that are next to the blackberry bushes, where they used to be, and they came from... Um, well, one set came from my brother Joe's house, and his were always really productive. Um, same thing, like first few years, I was getting just basketfuls every single day. We'd go out and we'd fill a colander just overflowing with raspberries. Go out the next day, fill up another colander. Well then, last year, they, they were awful. Last two years, actually. Very unproductive. I mean, we got 
virtually no fruit off of these raspberry plants that are supposed to produce fruit anywhere. Um, when Eden was little, we, we went out and, and planted blueberry bushes. And I was like, in this cursed spot, I'm going to grow something and it's going to be productive. So we planted them. Uh, they grew a couple little blueberries and then the whole bush, like just overnight, I had a couple bushes, they just shriveled up and died. So I ripped them out. Um, I had a lot of success with the garden in that spot for a couple years. I took, um, I took some fertilizer from, from next door and I, you know, I tilled that in. And first year, my neighbor, he looked at it and he's like, I've never seen a garden this, this crazy. He's like, it looks like an afro in my neighbor's yard. Um, and it was really productive. It was really great. The next year, uh, not so great. Then the next year, it just died. I borrowed your tiller um, and broke your tiller and fixed your tiller. <laughs> but that was the last time that I tilled that garden. That was a couple years ago. I gave up on it because it just, it, it, I couldn't grow anything, nothing. So my point is this. I never tested the soil and I never gave supplements to the soil. I just assumed like you throw seeds, throw them out there, you prune a couple plants and up grows a garden and up grow these berries that are supposed to grow anywhere. Um, but they don't, right? Like something is wrong with the soil, obviously. I don't know, maybe it's operator error a little bit, but I think something's wrong with that soil because nothing will live in that spot now. So I don't know what it is, but my point is this. In Scripture, Jesus says that I'm the vine and you are the branches. Every branch in me that doesn't bear fruit, he takes away. He takes away. Not he nurtures it and, you know, takes care of it. Every, every branch that doesn't bear fruit, he, God, takes it away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes that it might bear more fruit. Uh, pruning is not a cutting off, it's a cutting back. When you prune things, you're, you're cutting the excess. Um, I've, I know how to prune, not well, but I know how to prune. I prune my apple tree. Um, I've pruned things before and they, and they just grow really good which proves it's not me, those raspberries and blackberries. But right, pruning is just cutting the excess. It's getting rid, of, getting rid of the stuff that's not necessary because that chokes things out. It causes them to be unproductive. Jesus said, if you're not producing anything, God cuts you off. He takes you away. That's really important and that ought to get our attention as we talk about equipping each other God says a lot about being unproductive for the kingdom. It, it's not okay. It is not okay to be unproductive for the kingdom. So the question is, what do we do about our faith? Because a lot of times I feel like we just pray and we're like, God, you know, I have faith and I believe that, that the church is going to get better. I believe that people are going to get more involved. I believe that volunteerism is going to go up. And I believe, you know, I have faith of, uh, that these things are going to happen. But I fear that a lot of times we don't test the soil and we don't supplement our faith. We just throw seeds. We expect that the church will just start yielding fruit. We're like, hey, that, these seeds, they're God's seeds. They'll grow anywhere. And we just throw them down and expect the church to be fruitful and to multiply. But I'm finding out as the years click by, that it doesn't work that way in the church, and it's not supposed to work that way. That's a lazy way of being the church. I almost said doing church, of being the church. It's a lazy way of doing it. It's just saying, well, I planted some seeds, and we'll just sit back and see if God lets it grow. God says, no, that's, that's unproductive. You're wasting the talents that I've given you. You're wasting your resources. If you actually want to grow kingdom fruit, 
You've got to take time. You've got to test the soil. You've got to supplement it. You've got to nurture it. You've got to feed it nutrients. You've got to, you've got to encourage people. You've got to train people. You've got to equip people. It takes time. It takes pruning. It takes patience. And the scripture that Victor read for us this morning is really fascinating. And this has never stuck out in all the years that I've read this. I've read this probably a hundred or more times. And this has never jumped off the page at me until this last week. Peter says this, His divine power <clears throat> has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Do you hear that? His divine power granted us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence, by which he has granted to us his precious and very great promises, so that through them you may be, become partakers of the divine nature. Having escaped from the corruption that is in the world because of sinful desires. So what he's saying is God through his power gave us everything that pertains to life both here and eternal. God has given us the key. As Christians, he has blessed us with this knowledge. He has blessed us with, uh, with the ability to live life to its absolute fullest, and that includes for eternity. He's granted this um, to his precious and very great promises so that through them you might become partakers of the divine nature. That, that's really significant because... He's saying that we're going to be partakers together with God, that we're going to be dining together. Jesus talks about coming to the table together in heaven. You will not eat or drink of this again until you drink it anew with me in my Father's kingdom. It's this heavenly banquet that Jesus lays out and says, you guys, as saved people of mine, we're going to participate in this together. We're going to commune in heaven together. Verse 5, Peter says, For this very reason, make every effort to supplement your faith. Wait a second, I thought faith is what saves us. Right? Peter's talking about supplementing our faith because sometimes our faith dries up. Sometimes our faith gets small. Sometimes our faith gets rocked. Sometimes our faith needs more put into it, right? Our faith struggles sometimes. That's not God's fault. That, that's our human nature. Peter says you need to supplement your faith. You can't just throw seeds out and say, I have faith that it'll happen, and then sit back and cruise the rest of your life. You're not going to be fruitful that way. Make every effort to supplement your faith with virtue. Virtue means um, to live morally, to do things that are morally right, to be fair, to be honest. Supplement your faith with virtue and virtue with knowledge. Well, where do we get knowledge from? It's talking about living in the Word, about reading, studying, growing in the Word, and knowledge with self-control. Do you know Christians who lack self-control? Have you ever seen, right? Have you ever seen Christians that you're like, wait a second, that person is Christian? <laughs> right? <laughs> wait, are you raising your hand for yourself or for somebody else? <laughs> Supplement your faith with self-control, and your self-control with steadfastness, another word is endurance, not giving up. How many Christians do you know who just give, like any kind of trouble comes their way and they're like, well, I guess I'll go find a new church or I'll just leave all together, right? We, we know those people. Anytime any kind of problem comes, they're gone. And they're the first ones to tell you how to do things right. Endurance. Be willing to suffer. Be willing to work. Be willing to endure hardships. 
and your steadfastness with godliness. Being rooted in the divine is what that, the original word means for that. Being rooted in the divine. Um, doing things that please God. Doing things that are in accordance with God. That, that, that align with God's will. These are all supplements that are necessary for your faith to make you fruitful. And when these things are lacking, we all look like my blackberry bushes. <laughs> I'm out there ripping them out of the ground because they've not been productive for three years. And with godliness, brotherly affection, treating each other uh, with kindness. And brotherly affection with love. The second greatest commandment. Love your neighbors yourself. For if, this is where it gets fascinating, for if these qualities are yours and are increasing... So it's not like you have arrived. Peter's not saying, you know, you guys just need to have these things. Peter's saying, you guys need to work on these. You need to build them. He puts them in this successive order. You need to start with uh, virtue and add to virtue knowledge and add to that knowledge self-control and add to that self-control steadfastness you endure and add to that godliness. This is a process. It takes time. You're not going to turn things around and be this productive church by snapping your fingers or just by saying, well, we have faith. Now we're just waiting for God to do his part, right? This takes time, brotherly love, and brotherly love, you add to that love. For if these qualities are yours and are increasing, they keep you from being ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's interesting. Peter says if you have these and if they're increasing, if you keep adding to these, keep adding to these supplements, add these supplements to your faith, what's going to happen? You're slowly going to be growing up. You're going to be maturing. You're going to become fruitful. They keep you from being ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. I think part of the problem why we become so ineffective in the church is one, we don't know how to equip each other really well, but the other is that we get really impatient. And we're like, I, you know, I mentioned this before. I put a sign-up list on the back table and, you know, people should have seen it when they walked by in the bustle of things on their way out and nobody signed up to volunteer to fill these positions. And, oh. and then we give up. You never saw the sheet. <laughs> See? That back table, it gets you every time. <laughs> but you know what I mean? We, we put our list out and we're like, we got frustrated with people. And we're like, well, they must just not want to serve. They must just not want to, they just must not want to help. But the reality is to make each other fruitful. We've got to supplement our faith with these things, and it takes time, it takes encouragement, it takes patience, it takes, it takes um, pleading with people, it takes working with people, it takes praying with people, and we've got to help each other build these uh, supplements and add them to our faith. Verse 9, for whoever lacks these qualities is so nearsighted that he is blind, having forgotten that he was cleansed from his former sins. Therefore, brothers, be all the more diligent to confirm your calling and election, for if you practice these qualities, you will never fall. Hmm. Do you ever feel like we overcomplicate things? that we try all these new things and we're like, maybe if we try this differently, people will get excited for Jesus. Right? If we just try this, maybe, maybe volunteering their time for God's work will be a little bit more appealing. Right? And we go about it that route instead of saying, okay, maybe the key to, to all of us being productive Maybe the key to that is supplementing our faith with these virtues. And when we do these things, 
Peter says, you will never fall. If you practice these qualities, you will never fall. How many times have we fallen, right? How many times have we been the sick uh, plant that's not producing? And we know, right? We, if we're honest with ourselves, we know when we're not being productive. I know when I'm not being productive because I look back and I'm like, I, I feel horrible about myself, right? And I feel like, I feel like I'm spinning my wheels. I feel like I'm wasting my time. I feel like I'm you know, in neutral and not getting anywhere. Right? We know when we're not being productive. And we begin, to, we begin to shrivel up. And Peter says, if you practice these qualities, you will never fall. You will never fall. You won't slip up. You won't be unproductive. You will come in. You'll be focused. You'll know what you're doing. Your faith will carry you through. Uh, God will take those seeds and he will make them productive. He will make you productive for the kingdom. Verse 11, for in this way, there will be richly provided for you an inheritance or an entrance rather into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We talked about this in the class this morning, that, that our goal, getting to heaven, is what God wills for people. God wills people to be saved. He wills people to repent. He longs for us to fix our eyes on the goal, which is heaven, to teach our children everything that we do. Peter is saying that everything that we do should be funneled into this blessing. And it was interesting. I had, I had a board meeting this past week um, with Porch Swing Ministries. Some of you know Christine Parker. Uh, she founded the organization. I sit on the board. Um, and we had, a, we had an online board meeting, and uh, one of the board members was uh, asking for prayer. And she's, you know, she's older than I am, and, and she was saying, you know, I just, she's like, I, I, I think I'm going to go back to college, and I'm, you know, I'm going to get a degree, my MBA, and um, I think it was business. And, uh, you know, she's like, just pray, just pray that, that I find direction. And I was like, I started smiling. I was like, I need to say something. I was like, you make me feel so much better about myself right now because I'm so glad that I'm not the only one who's at this point in my life and I'm trying to figure out what I want to be when I grow up. <laughs> and Christine, Christine Parker said something that was, it, it, was really, it was really healing to hear it. And she said, you know, like, probably most people are in that category where we're just trying to figure out what we're going to do with life. She's like, but the one thing that I learned is that it's not important to be successful, you know, at, at one thing and to be really good at it. And she's like, but in all of my endeavors, I tried to have one central focus that comes back to God. That no matter what, what path I take in life, that it doesn't matter if it succeeds or if it fails, because that path is leading me to bless other people. And I thought that that's actually a really cool way to think about that. So I think this is what Peter's saying here. When you do things, do it in a way that's going to bless other people. Supplement your faith with these virtues and you won't fall. You'll be productive. And so, you know, as far as what ministries we do in the church, I, I, I don't really know. <laughs> um, but I don't know that it much matters as long as we're blessing people and we're adding these to our faith every single day. So I want to ask you to go out this week, um, think about these things and go back and reread this passage. Write these virtues down and start working on them. They're essential. This is not optional in Peter's mind. Peter says these are essential. These will keep you from being unproductive. Write them down. Write this list down. Put it up on your wall and work on these. I encourage you to do that. If there's anybody this morning who's not yet taken that step to put Christ on in baptism, of course we would invite you to do that. Um, or if you have any prayer needs, we would invite you to come up. Or our shepherds in the back, uh, you can go see them as we all stand and sing this song together.